Perfect. Well, I don't want to build it again. Yep, been there before. First comes the less than graceful landing in the starter pod. I made it. Followed by the insanity inducing amount of mining and repeated notifications saying inventory full. Like a scene straight out of Interstellar, you find that hours have passed since you first began this vicious cycle, though it only felt like minutes. Yet as you look upon your hours of work, what do you find? A five by five platform of unwelded armor blocks and an inventory that is still full. So what do we do from here, silly gooses? Well, we break the cycle. In this base building basics tutorial, we are going to turn that pile of ore filling up in your inventory into a base that will help you grow your new space engineer survival empire. Now, I'm not here to stifle your creativity. This video isn't intended to show you how to build a specific base or give you a blueprint, rather free you from that looming question of what do I need for a base and allowing you to create a structure that is your own. In fact, for the purposes of this video, let's break away from the idea that we are building a house and instead view it as a machine that we are going to live in. This machine can be broken down into three core functions, power, production, and survival. All of them are quite important, and like islands in the stream, they rely on each other. Thanks, Dolly. Unlike space engineers, I don't plan on taking up all your time, so let's briefly discuss these three points. The machine that is your base doesn't function on hopes and dreams. It isn't powered off the joy of imagination and ambition. It is powered by good old electricity. Currently, there are multiple options available to engineers to power their bases. However, as this guide is geared toward an early game base build, you're gonna have three options available to you. Battery power, wind power, and solar power. And I know that the hydrogen engine can be available pretty early on, but unless you get an extreme amount of dopamine from mining ice, or you just love the pain, which hey, no judgment here, powering your base with it isn't really a viable option. Of the three sources of power more readily accessible to you from the beginning, it is absolutely worth it to grind out the wind turbines. I consider them to be the old reliable of power generation. It just doesn't quit. If there's wind, there's power. Unlike those solar panels that call it quits when the sun goes out, losers. Hashtag team wind turbine. There is one caveat though, much like myself, the turbines get kind of cranky when their personal space is invaded. You can't build two turbines directly next to each other. Doing so will absolutely destroy their effectiveness and render them about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. In order to avoid the turbine temper tantrums, it is recommended that you place them at least eight blocks up for a better wind flow and six to nine, <laughs> nice, blocks apart. If you don't care about aesthetics, I'd recommend building a happy little turbine tree. Well, hello there and welcome to the joy of turbine placement with Rev Place Games. Let's see what he's up to. Now let's just take our armor blocks and we'll build a nice strong trunk right about there. And now, now silly gooses, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Now let's give it some happy little arms to reach out and catch that beautiful breeze. And a few blocks this way and a few blocks that way and wow, there we go. Anyway, once you get your power tower built, it's a good idea to add batteries. In the event that something catastrophic happens to your wind turbines, it's space engineers. Catastrophic failures are inevitable. With the heart of your base up and running, next comes production. The machine that is your base is a very hungry beast and its favorite meal is ore. Yeah, all that ore in your inventory is the equivalent of a bag lunch made with love and a concerning amount of terrain deformation. To feed this machine, it needs a mouth and hands. And these are also known as the basic refinery and the basic assembler. And now you may be asking, Rev, how do I get the components I need to make them? Allow me to direct us to the survival kit attached to the drop pod. Not only does it function as a respawn point, it also serves as your ticket to building a basic refinery and assembler. The survival kit is only able to refine stone into gravel, but it will also net you trace amounts of other basic ingots. To do this, put the stone that you mined into its inventory, head over to the production tab in your menu and tell it to produce ingots, which it will do at a pace that makes snails think they are Olympic sprinters. As I look out upon the world that will be mined, I stare directly at the sun. And I wonder two things. What will become of my empire? And two, where did all the lights go? And while you're waiting, would you consider liking this video and hitting that subscribe button for more Space Engineers content? Thanks! So go ahead and keep this process going until you've produced enough of the different smelted ores to create your basic refinery and your basic assembler. And I repeat, it's important that you build these two blocks. This dynamic duo is your ticket out of the Stone Age. Here's a quick tip about ore mining. Your hand drill has the ability to detect ores within a relatively small range. The easiest way to figure out where that delicious ore is hiding is to click X, take flight with your jetpack, and then look down at the ground. What you're looking for are patches of ground with dark speckles. 
This is most easily seen on the ice lakes of the Earth-like planet, but I will show you pictures of what it looks like on other terrain as well. Mining these ores takes a lot of time and it really does help speed things up if you build yourself a mining ship. Luckily, I have a guide for that too. Once you have production up and running, it is time to focus on the final core function of the base, survival. But survival isn't just about not dying, it, it's about making your life easier. With your factory humming, you're going to have two very good problems on your hands. Too many resources and nowhere for them to go. Your basic refinery and assembler will have you swimming in ingots and components like the Scrooge McDuck of Space Engineers. It's important then that you have a place for all of those ingots and components to go. So. Make sure to build some large storage containers. You can connect them directly to your refinery and assembler with conveyors, kind of like plumbing, but for space engineers machines. All you have to do is connect the ports, shown here, together with the conveyor tubes. Unless you want to continually carry ingots and components by hand, then you can do that too. I must say that as this series is still in its infancy, I don't have an advanced guide on conveyors and storage. So if the idea of your storage being automatically sorted sounds lovely, Splitsy has some very good guides on that subject. In the same vein as component storage, you are eventually going to need hydrogen to make your way into space. And this will require that your base has two more important blocks, an O2H2 generator and a hydrogen tank. In essence, give the O2H2 generator ice and it will convert it into hydrogen and oxygen. From there, you can go ahead and fill up the hydrogen tank. Just be sure to once again connect these blocks together with conveyor tubes as well. Survival in Space Engineers means at some point you are going to find yourself in a situation where you have to respawn. Therefore, it's quite necessary that you have at least one medical station or survival kit in your base or more. Trust me, you don't want to get caught without a respawn point. The long walk. Of course, you can also be the cause of your own respawn. Most of the time, it's thanks to a jetpack and a solid object. Ow. You will definitely experience that. In many ways, it's almost a rite of passage as a space engineer. Which brings me to a more grim need in the survival aspect of your base, turrets. Whether or not you play with mods, though I would encourage it once you get a feel for the game, there is a need for base defense. Pirates can and will send drones to harass your base, and if you're playing online, other people will most definitely harass your base. To help protect the core of your growing empire, place down a few turrets. Gatling turrets are exceptionally strong against small grid ships and drones. Rocket turrets are great, but the rocket ammo is incredibly expensive and is not readily available on the starting planet. For taking on larger grids, the assault cannon turret packs a decent punch with ammo that is relatively easy to make. You can also make custom turrets using a rotor, a hinge, and a custom turret controller. If you want to see a guide on how to make custom turrets, let me know in the comments. I hope that you've enjoyed the Space Engineers Base Building Basics video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see you silly gooses.